What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and it is time for my official 2022 preseason top 25 ranking. Of course, the coaches poll came out just a couple of days ago. I did a reaction video to that. Uh, no real surprises there. Maybe a few surprises, but nothing too crazy. And it just got to to got me started thinking about my top 25 and and really the last couple of days have just been going over in my head how would i rank these teams especially the top 15 or so uh, anyways so i thought let's just go ahead and do it let's go ahead and put out a preseason top 25 the ap poll i believe will come out next week and maybe we'll do a reaction video to that i want to be clear that this is not necessarily how i think the teams are going to end the season this is where i would rank them now based off of you know where they finished last year and then what they have coming back this year additions to the roster things like that there are maybe some cases where i i am going to go back to last year for tiebreakers if it's close between two teams maybe giving a team some credit for what they did last year so again that means that this is not what my final top 25 is going to look like at the end of the season i will reveal that um, i'm about to go through the rest of the conferences and show the predictions as far as the team by team predictions i'm done with those uh, but we will show you the records for all the teams based off of my predictions as uh, we're getting close we are getting close college football season just a little over two weeks away so this is my top 25 i will come back and show you some teams that i considered look it's really close the top three are the top three and then you have about uh, eight or nine teams that are in the next group that are really close and then you have really the rest of the teams that, that we're going to talk about here today are all really close after those teams so i mean there are teams that i'm not going to have ranked that you can make an argument should be ranked in the top 20 because again the teams are just really close and that's why you have to kind of just go with some of these uh, tiebreakers like even looking back to last year so let's just get right into it again i will show the teams that i considered at the end if you're wondering about you know did i at least consider your team if they're not in the top 25 but you see 21 through 25 here cincinnati at number 21 a lot of people thinking that they're just going to drop off they lost all that talent they have a decent amount coming back i think people will be surprised they bring back a transfer quarterback who was there previously uh, comes in there i think he's going to do a good job for them and again, the, the talent's not not that big of a, a loss for them. They do have some guys coming back. Uh, I think Fickle's already proven that he is a great coach. So I think Cincinnati, especially being in the playoff last year, deserves to be in the preseason rankings. Pittsburgh at number 22, a really interesting team here. I've talked about, you know, I've talked about all these teams. You've been following me all offseason. I'm just going to be repeating myself, really. This is a team that, because of their defense, which is going to be really good, and their run game, this, to me, is a top 25 team with Keaton Slovis in there at quarterback uh, transfer. Maybe not as good as Kenny Pickett, but still, I think, a very solid option for them. Houston at number 23, uh, maybe the favorite for a lot of people to be that uh, group of five team in the New Year's Six. Uh, you look at what they have. They have a lot coming back. Houston has a lot coming back. They finished last season really strong. This is going to be a good football team. I believe they do deserve to be ranked. So Oklahoma State and Iowa, to me, are really close with some of the teams that did not get in but this is really about what they did last year i mean oklahoma state went to the big 12 championship yes i have a lot of question marks about this team top two linebackers uh, gone not much experience back in the secondary a thousand yard rusher a thousand yard receiver i mean you can go down the list uh, spencer sanders really hasn't shown me enough in the passing game to where i can take this team to that next level and, and put them in the top 15 or so like a lot of people are doing but this is still going to be a good football team don't get me wrong this team uh, will have a chance to maybe to get to the big 12 championship once again they're not going to be bad uh, they will be a good team and because of what they did last year i think they deserve to be in this preseason top 25 and the same things with, is here with iowa uh, iowa i don't know if i would, would put them in the top 25 as far as I mean, it's just close. It's really close. But look at what they did last year. They went to the Big Ten Championship, had a great season. They don't lose that much from last year's roster. So Iowa, I think, again, because of what they did last year. But put it at number, number 25, you could put the entire Big Ten West almost because I think that division is so even. And, again, I've talked about that a lot. And don't worry about if, if you're saying, well, this team, you've got them way down here. That's, that means it's going to take a long time for you to get them into the top ten or wherever, uh, even if they keep winning. 
I do a, a new top 25 every week. I don't look at the, week, the previous week's ranking. I could I do a completely new top 25. So, you know, if, if Iowa goes out and looks really good the first few weeks, you could see them in the top 10. I don't can't remember now who they play. Let's say if they, they beat Michigan and do it impressively, I think that's the fourth or fifth game of the season, then, yeah, you're going to see them go maybe in the top five. I mean, who knows? We'll see when we get to the season. But, again, I don't just move teams up and down. So if you're new to the channel, you'll see that once we get into the season. How about 16 through 20? Kentucky at number 20 going to be a solid team once again this year. I'm not quite buying into the Will Levis hype as far as him being a Heisman candidate or a top five draft pick. Maybe he'll prove me wrong, but this will still be a good quality team. Defense will be strong. They'll be able to run the football. Uh, some pretty big losses on the offensive line. That's kind of why I've got them a little bit lower than where I think they could potentially get to. BYU returns just a ton of production, uh, more than almost anyone in the country. I know they didn't play great in the bowl game last year, but this is still a team that beat Utah last year. I believe they were five and zero. I believe they were five and zero against the Pac-12 uh, last season. So this is still a this is a team that deserves to be ranked with all that they have coming back. I've got them at 19. Oklahoma at number 18. You know some question marks there with the new coaching staff, a lot of new transfers. Dylan Gabriel, can he get it done in the Big 12? I believe he can. Uh, they've got enough around him, and you would expect Brent Venables to upgrade this defense. Oklahoma, I think, has the upside to be a top-10 team, no doubt about it. But with some question marks, we're going to put them at 18, and I've got Baylor just ahead of Oklahoma at 17. This is one of those scenarios where you kind of go back to last year. Uh, Baylor winning the Big 12, I think. I'm going to put them just ahead of Oklahoma here at number 17. This is a team that uh, brings back a, a decent amount of production. Offensive line looks like it should be pretty strong. Blake Shapin at quarterback, I think it's going to be really good for them. Skill position, yeah, you got some question marks there. The running back, wide receiver positions. Uh, but the defense, I think, will be really good once again. So I've got them preseason ranked ahead of Oklahoma. Doesn't mean that's where I think they're going to finish, and maybe that's a little bit of a hint. But USC at number 16, the only team that I think I had ranked that did not get to a bowl game last year, and and I really didn't want to rank any teams that didn't get to a bowl game last year just because, I mean, that's a huge jump to go from missing a bowl game into the top 25 preseason. But USC is just such a different team. So many new faces, so much talent added to this roster, a new coaching staff, Lincoln Riley, a guy who's proven it at Oklahoma. It's just hard not to rank USC because of all the talent they have. It may not work out for them. They might not be a top 25 team. But on paper, with the talent they have, I think it'd be crazy not to at least rank USC. And I've got them at number 16. A team that has potential that the defense can step up, potential to be higher than 16, maybe even a top 10 team. 11 through 15, we'll start with 11 here. NC State, a team that uh, I have disrespected just a little bit this offseason. I, I had some bad intel on this team, on, on who was coming back. I think I talked about this before. Uh, they had a couple of, of players that I thought were leaving. They were, they were out of eligibility. They were actually coming back. And when you really dig into it, you look at everyone coming back on this roster, NC State is going to be good. They're going to be a good football team. Can they beat Clemson again? That'll be a, the big question. But really, both sides of the ball, they should be really sound. Not the talent of, of a, you know, a Clemson or an Alabama or anything like that. But still, if things go their way, don't sleep on NC State to potentially, potentially make a run uh, at the college football playoff. Maybe a dark horse team there. And then I've got 12 through 15. So these teams are all really even for me in the SEC West. Uh, Texas A&M at number 12. I've got them at number 12 just because of the, the overall talent. This is the most talented roster of these four teams, although they do lack experience. Ole Miss, they brought in a bunch of transfers that I think are going to do really well for them, and so did LSU. Uh, Ole Miss and LSU both really loaded up on the transfers if they can all come together both of these teams have a chance to have really good seasons it's crazy to me that lsu is not ranked uh, in the coaches poll brian kelly has proven he's a great coach he's got the talent he's brought it in from really you know all these these places in the transfer portal maybe it doesn't come together but you got options at quarterback Jaden daniels an experienced player a couple other guys there and, and brennan and nussmeyer so you have to think that that quarterback position is going to be solid for them uh, when we're talking about guys that do have game experience, not a bunch of unknowns. One of them, I think, and I think it's going to be Jaden Daniels, by the way, will emerge 
And I think with the talent around them, the coaching staff, LSU is going to be a top 25 team. Arkansas, uh, based off of what they did last year, definitely deserves to be ranked. A lot coming back on offense. Some question marks on defense. They did, did lose some pretty good players. Uh, but Sam Pittman has proven that he can get it done. And I believe Arkansas does deserve to be ranked. And again, these teams very even for me. Texas A&M, Ole Miss, LSU, and Arkansas. And I don't think Mississippi State and Auburn are far behind them. Uh, you could make an argument for those two teams to be ranked as well. I will talk about them in just a little bit. But let's get into the top 10. And this is where people are going to probably hate on my top 25. Uh, but I really believe that the three teams you're going to, of course, argue. Michigan State, Miami, and Oregon. These are my three surprise teams. These are my three teams that I think are going to be better than a lot of people expect. Some people do believe these teams are going to be really good. Others maybe don't. Uh, but let's start with Notre Dame at number 10. How are they going to look this year? New coach, Marcus Freeman, of course, he's already been there. I, I don't really worry about the defense. They did lose some pretty good players, but I think the defense will be solid for them. It's more about the offense. Uh, Kyron Williams has gone at running back. They have not really been able to do a whole lot in the passing game uh, and get really explosive there. So without him to lean on in the run game, not a lot of proven guys back there. Tyler Bugner at quarterback, really unproven. So I think Notre Dame is is tough because I think they have the potential to be a playoff team, a top five team, but there are enough question marks to where Notre Dame might not even finish in the top 10. So again, a lot of unknowns there, but because of what they have, have done recently, I think you have to put them in the top 10 at least. Uh, and then again, we'll skip over Michigan State, Miami, and Oregon, go to Clemson at number six. They were number four in the coaches poll. Uh, this is a team that of course really struggled last year compared to where they normally are. But it's a defense that's just going to be really good. Maybe the best defense in the country. It's going to come down to the quarterback position and the offensive line. If they can get those two positions to play better this year, Clemson will probably be in the college football playoff. I mean, they're at least in the running because of that defense. That defense is going to be really, 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 really good. I'm telling you, watch out for that Clemson defense. Uh, so because of all that, because of, of Dabo Sweeney and, and what they've been able to do, I think Clemson – deserves to be ranked pretty high. I've got number six, Michigan State, Miami, and Oregon. Again, these are my teams that I think could be sleeper teams for the college football playoff. Michigan State, it's going to be tough just because of the division they're in, the schedule that they play. I think it's a team that I've got preseason number seven, but probably won't finish in the top 10 just because of their schedule and the way it's going to shake out. But who knows? They might. And it's a team that a lot of people think are going to really drop off because they lost Kenneth Walker. I mean, that's really what everyone's basing this off of, losing Kenneth Walker. Well, they've got a stable of running backs. I'm telling you, this you're going to be surprised with, with some of these guys. A couple of transfers coming in there. Peyton Thorne, a veteran at quarterback. Um, a defense that's going to be strong. Michigan State is going to be a really good team. Again, they might not finish in the top 10, but I believe based off of what they have coming back, what they've added to their roster, and where they finished last year, they deserve to be in the top 10. Miami, it's all about all the production coming back, the elite coaching staff that they have put together. And I'm not just talking about Mario Cristobal. I'm talking about the assistants. They have really built a, a great staff there at Miami. Uh, had brought in some guys in the transfer portal. Tyler Van Dyke at quarterback. I think he's a top 10 quarterback in the country. Miami is going to be a very dangerous team. I think people are sleeping on them a little bit. And then Oregon, another team that has a lot of production coming back. Mario Cristobal left a lot of talent on this roster. And then you add a veteran quarterback, a proven quarterback in Bo Nix, a guy that's beaten Alabama, had a lot of great moments. I know he's been inconsistent. But if we can get that good Bo Nix, Oregon's a playoff contender. I'm telling you, there's enough talent on this roster now, of course, if we get bad Bo Nix, Oregon's not going to be a top 10 team. He might probably won't even keep his job as a starter. So that's that's an interesting team there in Oregon, but I think there is enough there to put them in the top 10. I know people are going to argue with these three teams, but just my personal picks. All right, top five. Top three is easy. Everyone has this top three. Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia. Do I even need to talk about them? I mean, we know Alabama absolutely loaded on both sides of the ball brought in some great transfers ohio state's gonna have the best offense probably in the country or at least one of the best offenses and a defense that i think will be improved georgia an offense that should be strong everything coming back there and a defense that won't be as good as it was last year but still kirby smart has proven they can reload they will be just fine on that side of the ball 
and just talent wise they're right there with Alabama and probably overall roster talent ahead of Ohio State so these are your top three teams maybe you flip Ohio State and Georgia I would be okay with that but I think these have to be the three teams and then then four and five for me Michigan is a team that is probably not going to be as good as they were last year but this was a team that went to the college ball playoff and, at, and returns up pretty much everyone on offense, it's hard for me to not to, to put them lower than four. Again, a playoff team, they returns everyone on offense. I mean, they're really going to drop off that much. At least preseason, I think they should be in the top five. Uh, defense, there are some question marks. They lost some really good players, but they've got guys. They will be okay on defense. They won't be probably a top five defense, but they'll be pretty good. And so, again, I, preseason, I've got to put Michigan at number four. Not saying they'll finish in the top four, but preseason, that's where I'm going to put them. And then Utah at number five. Um, and, and let me just go ahead and say, all right, so everyone's going to say, well, how can you put Michigan at number four based off of the fact that they went to the college football playoff? And then you got Cincinnati way back at 20-something. Well, Michigan returns everyone on offense. Cincinnati does not. Cincinnati loses guys on both sides of the ball. Uh, they lose more than Michigan, so that'll answer that question for you. And I know I, I'll make one little statement, and everyone will, will jump on that. You have to look at the big picture on some of this stuff. But anyways, number five, Utah finished the season as one of the best teams in the country. Came very close to beating Ohio State in the Rose Bowl uh, preseason. I absolutely think they deserve to be number five. Uh, I, I'd even be okay if you put them at number four. This team has a lot coming back off of a really good team. It's as simple as that. They're well coached return their starting quarterback again both sides of the ball yeah they lose some big time playmakers on defense but utah should be the favorite preseason at least in the pac-12 doesn't mean i'm gonna pick them to win the pac-12 but preseason i think they should be in the top five all right here are the other teams that i considered talked about mississippi state and auburn a minute ago they're right there in that conversation in the big in the sec west i'm i'm starting to feel better and better about auburn a team that when you look at all the offseason stuff, you kind of just said, well, Auburn's going to have a bad year. But when you really look at this Auburn team, I'm telling you, they could be pretty good. I picked them to go 7-5. and five. Tennessee, uh, it's hard to not put in the, them in the top 25 with everything they have on offense. Uh, but I had to, you know, I couldn't put everyone in there. South Carolina and Florida, I think, have potential to be top 25 teams as well. UCF out of the American could wind up passing Houston and Cincinnati. They've got a lot coming back this year. Texas is interesting. I know people are probably going to hate on me for not putting Texas in the top 25, but look, it's a team that didn't go to a bowl game last year, and they don't, I mean, they didn't do that much in the transfer portal. They had an explosive offense last year. That's not really, I mean, even if they're, they're going to be good on offense, but they were good on offense last year. They still have a lot of question marks on defense, so it's, it's hard for me to put a team that did not make a bowl game and didn't really do a lot to fix their defense. It's hard for me to put them in the top 25 preseason Although I think Texas has a really good chance to be in the top 25 this year. Penn State's a team with a lot of talent, but a lot of young talent. Uh, Sean Clifford, it's it's all about him. Can he take that next step? Penn State has potential to be a top 15 team. I just I think with everything they lost on defense, it's hard for me to put them in the preseason top 25. Purdue was, I mean, Purdue is very close to getting in. Minnesota, very close to getting in. Uh, both of these teams, I think, have a real chance at the Big Ten West. Nebraska really has more to do with what how they finished last year, not getting to a bowl game and all that. I think Nebraska probably, I don't know. It, it's Nebraska is such a question mark. Wisconsin, I was just working on their roster uh, just the other day. This team lost a lot on defense. I don't, I don't understand the hype for Wisconsin. Graham Mertz has not proven he can do a whole lot there at the quarterback position. Lost all their top receivers, including Jake Ferguson at tight end. But they'll be able to run the football. We know that. I do trust them to be able to kind of uh, add in some of these young guys on defense because of the coaching staff that they have where they'll be pretty strong on defense, but they're not going to be as good as they were last year on that side of the ball. It, it, Graham Mertz is going to have to step up for Wisconsin to be a contender this year. I really feel that way. But they're at least considered for the top 25 just because of that run game with Braylon Allen and this offensive line. Going to be tough to stop them in the run game. Wake Forest would have been in my top 25, but we, I just heard today about Sam Hartman. Don't know his status. Don't know if he's going to play this year. I really don't know what's going on. Uh, it said a non-football related injury or medical issue, and that doesn't sound good. So who knows what's going on with him. Because of that, I'm going to hesitate on putting Wake Forest in the top 25. 
But if we get to week one and he is ready to go with whatever his issue is, if they have Sam Hartman, Wake Forest is a top 25 team. Their offense will be really, really good. Uh, but for now, I'm sorry, just, just can't put them in there. And that did give me an opportunity to add one more team in. And then UCLA, a sleeper team out of the Pac-12. A lot of production coming back. Don't sleep on them. Uh, these are all teams that I think have a really good chance to get into the top 25 at some point. Preseason, though, they just missed out. Give me your thoughts, your top 25, whatever you want to leave down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more here on the SG1 Sports College Football Channel.